Hi, this is Claudia Carella and today we're tackling one issue at a time. We are joined by Jaume Duc Guillo, Director General of Communication at the European Parliament. Welcome. Thank you very much. We will be discussing communicating the EU elections. With EU elections approaching in June, uh, what's the level of interest uh, among EU citizens uh, in participating in this democratic process? And uh, are there unprecedented challenges to this process? Well, first of all, if you have a look to the Eurobarometers, to the uh, European or the pan-European surveys in these last two years, yes, you can see that the interest uh, of citizens around these next European elections has been growing and it's probably 10 points more than it was in 2019. The number of people who say that they will vote or that they would like to vote if the elections would take place next week uh, has increased in more than 10 points compared with five years ago. What it's also maybe or more interesting and more telling is the fact that three quarters of citizens now say that they know that what's being decided by the European institutions Council, Commission, Parliament has an impact in their lives. And this wasn't there five years ago or ten years ago. This is the result of the visibility of the Union during these last years because of the different crises, because of the way the European Union has delivered or because the way, let's say, the European Union has shown to the citizens its real added value. And then, of course, there will be challenges and the first challenge is uh, to be uh, uh, able to increase turnout again. In 2019, the good news was that uh, nine more points people voted. We moved from 42% to 51%. This was the first time since 1984 where more people voted than abstained. In 28 member states, at that time including uh, the United Kingdom, now again the surveys tell us that there will be a second increase, but let's hope. And still a couple of days uh, um, to to, to work quite hard. Your campaign sets out to reach 370 million voters across 27 um, member states. What are the primary objectives of your campaign? First of all is to inform everyone. This is our obligation, our duty as an institution, to be able to inform these 370 million people, not only about their right to vote, for the European elections, but even more important, why it's so important to vote and why maybe this time it's even more important than it was five or 10 or 15 uh, years ago. And then there is a second objective or a second target in some way, which is to try to mobilize some of them. Of course, the institution as such, we cannot mobilize millions and millions of citizens. And by the way, this is maybe not even our mission. Our mission is to inform. But it's true that if you are good in informing, maybe you are also good in mobilizing some of these uh, uh, people. And these are, let's say, the, the two main missions uh, since a couple of months and until the day of the elections. And uh, you have emphasized the importance of informing citizens about the Parliament's work and its impact on their lives. Uh, could you explain why it is crucial for EU citizens uh, to exercise their right to vote in these elections? Well, first of all, voting is a right, but voting is also a privilege. There are many millions of citizens in this world who cannot vote. And there are also many million of citizens who have the right to vote, but in reality, they, they don't have the right to choose. Uh, look to what happened in the Russian elections two months ago. Yeah, there were elections and there were candidates, but we all know that these were fake elections. So we, as Europeans, as citizens of the European Union, we are privileged because we have the right to vote in our countries for our national parliaments and governments, but we also have this possibility to vote for our representatives uh, in uh, the European Union or at the European level, and this is fundamental. And then second, because voting is also the moment and the way uh, to protect democracy and to make democracy stronger than it was in the past. And in this particular moment, when you also see that in the world the number of countries that you can consider democracies is shrinking, there are less democracies now than seven or eight years ago, this is probably also a reason for voting to protect democracy at the European level in a moment where democracy it's fragile or democracy, it's at stake in some way. 
how does the Parliament plan to counter disinformation and ensure citizens receive accurate information during these elections? Well, there is no silver bullet. There are many things that must be done at the same time to fight against this information. First of all is to promote information. It looks very simple, but it's not. Um, when there is more information, there is less space for this information. When people have the possibility to have access to more information about the European Union, what the European Union is doing or not doing, then this information will find more difficulties in being efficient. So this is maybe the most important thing. The second is how do you fight against those who create this information, in many cases also through external interference, foreign interference. And there I think that in 2024, we are better equipped than we were five years ago because during this legislature, the European Parliament adopted the Digital Services Act, the Digital Market Act, the Media Freedom Act, and now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the, Intel the Artificial Intelligence Act, which is, by the way, the first in the world. And this legislative package, it's obliging, it's putting uh, on the shoulders of platforms, social platforms, uh, or uh, those platforms that uh, grant uh, access to citizens to internet to have a look to what they are doing or what's happening in their social media or in their, let's say, in, their, uh, in the content that they are uh, providing to citizens. They are also responsible about stopping this information uh, using these kind of channels that, by the way, are used more and more by, by all kind of uh, uh, citizens. And then, of course, it's about media literacy. It's very important also to teach to students, to pupils, uh, to, to children, I would say even, uh, about this information, about the risks of this information, because this is, the, let's say, the most uh, weakened part of society, and at the same time, it's the one which is the most exposed to social, to social media and to the dangers of internet. And speaking of citizens, um, can you outline specific tactics tactics that the Parliament will employ to reach uh, new voters and the skeptics? Yeah, well, what we are doing since several months now is running a campaign, an elections information campaign, which is shareable, which can be shared by anyone, by the other institutions. By the way, we are helped quite a lot by the European Commission, by the European External Action Service, in mobilizing, for example, expats, people who live in third countries but who still have the possibility to vote in the European elections. We are being helped by all kind of uh, NGOs, civil society organizations. It's quite huge and it's important because, again, trying to address 370 million citizens just from the institution, this would be impossible. Then it's also about uh, having uh, help from those people who can be credible for others, young people who can talk to other young people, uh, content creators who can also be uh, followed by millions of people in the European Union, even I would say celebrities, influencers, these people who are playing more and more a role in society because many citizens uh, trust them more than they could trust, for example, traditional media, they also can play a role, and this is what we are doing. And by the way, when addressing those that um, will vote for the first time, or will have the possibility to vote for the first time, these primo voters, 23, 24 million citizens will have the possibility to vote for the first time, you know that you need this help. You need the help of other young people, influencers, and content creators. Um, in your view, uh, what are the key issues uh, that will sway these elections and uh, which issues do you think are the most important for EU citizens? I think it will be about the future of the Union in a very complicated world. The Union has been, I would say, quite efficient during these last years to cope with Brexit, to cope with the pandemic, uh, also to support Ukraine against the Russian aggression. Uh, but uh, we don't know what will be next. What we know is that this war is still there, that this war is not just against Ukraine, it's also against us in some way. It's against our uh, democratic model, our freedoms, uh, our way of organizing our society. Uh, we don't know how China is going to evolve in the next years. We don't know what will happen during the next presidential elections in the United States. What we know is that the moment arrived uh, to take 
our own responsibility uh, on protecting our citizens, on defense and security policy, on access to energy, access to basic products, many, many things that we delegated for many years to third countries and that now maybe we will need also to ensure ourselves for our citizens. And this is going to be very big, this is going to be also very difficult and for that we need the support of citizens and this support can be expressed in many ways but maybe the best one is to vote during the European elections and for them to decide who will be those who will take the decisions within the European Parliament. Thank you, Director General. Thank you very much.